For to Shakyamuni Buddha. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world, to you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, devotion like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma Rampage, homage to the Great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha, like a star, a mirage, a lamp, Illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness and death. I take refuge in the guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in total enlightenment, in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create, by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. 
May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. <clears throat> Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jewel mandala, together with other offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. All my masters, my yadams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Idam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam the heart of the perfection of wisdom sutra. I prostrate to the Arya triple gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on massive vultures mountain on Rajagriya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shari Putra. Shari Putra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. And in the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including, no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and including, no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond air, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, we'll say it, one time out loud and then to, our, to ourselves 20. Taita, gati, gati, par gati, par sam gati, bodhisattva.
Taita Gati Gati Par Gati Par Sangati Bodhisoha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you've indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharivari Putra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. To fulfill all, to, to fill, fulfill the needs of all beings and their various levels of understanding, we request that you turn the wheel of Dharma, including the lesser and greater common and extraordinary approaches. Trupo, could you get the Kal Chakra poster that's in the office? Okay. Is it cold in Pennsylvania? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dirk's wearing a cap inside. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> So uh, in a uh, little bit more than a month, uh, Jada Rinpoche will be here and um, primarily doing uh, Kala Chakra. So um, we're coordinating that now. And part of our reason for meeting today is to start setting the view so that uh, we can actually uh, enjoy ourselves. <laughs> So how's the sound right now? That's okay. And then uh, how's the sound out in uh, Las Vegas? Good, okay. And video? So, so if, if there's some problems with uh, the sound or the video, uh, what's a good way to alert me and alert um, our technical team, what, what's a good way to do that out there? What do you think? Do you have to wave or do you have to like um, send a message? How does it work? I think it's best to send a direct message just to the video yeah. team and not to everybody. I think with a small group, maybe it's possible um, that we, we don't have to have people. Uh, what happened there? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's there. good. Yeah, per good idea. So maybe, maybe we don't need to have people on mute. Do we need to have people on mute? Yeah. So, 25 people, so yeah. So, <clears throat> so if they want to say something, then how do they do it? They, they raise their hand. So then they have to be on video, or you won't see their hand. No. There's oh, there's a little hand. Yeah. Where, where's the little hand? I won't see if they're raising their hand though. No? Yeah. Oh, somebody raised their hand and let me see what happens. Don't see any, I don't see anything on mine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's good. Oh, okay. Because then if someone, then I can call on them too, right? Yes. Okay. That's, that's better. That's good. So um, it, I'll start out a little bit on the negative. <laughs> so so uh, we're not putting on an event. That's important, right? Because samsaric mind is we're people putting on an event, right? I'm me and I'm, put, I'm helping put on an event like that. So uh, that will get us in trouble if we stay stuck on that perspective, right? That's 
uh, very um, conventional world, just I'm me or they're them, and we're putting on an event. So uh, when we're using conventional words and we're not confused by them, that's not a problem. But generally people are confused, so they take like I to be ultimately existing from its own side. And also we think there's some objective event we're doing from its own side, right? So when we take that conventional world, the world that's merely imputed to be uh, substantially existing independently from its own side, then we have nothing but suffering and tears. And I hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, as with the last uh, Kala Chakra, I'm inviting people to uh, future pace, and as we would say in hypnotherapy, and it's already happened, and then to look and see how, how it happened so successfully. So, like it's already happened. That's a, we already did it. <clears throat> but then how did, how did we get to where we are? So a uh, uh, way to uh, backtrack is we got there through view, meditation, and action. So uh, maintaining the view, um, our Eightfold Path is uh, sometimes made very simple with view, meditation, and action, right? So we need to start out with the view. So, uh, so the view is talked about in different ways. Sometimes we'd say, um, you know, like uh, primordial awareness or just awareness, or we'd use Tibetan terms like Rigpa. And Zen, sometimes they say, don't know mind. I would say, absolute. <clears throat> uh, but I think for putting on um, uh, and going forth, that uh, one way to think of you that might be helpful is interdependence. And uh, don't know and primordial awareness all at the same time. Would that be possible? <clears throat> so when we say primordial awareness or complete purity, we say, it's already happened, it's already there. So that's very important starting. It's already happened. We don't have to make anything up. Muhammad is like, don't make anything up. It's already there. <clears throat> and actually I like uh, the Zen phrase, don't know. That's their way of saying uh, emptiness, right? A lot of times when people believe they're putting on an event, they have lots of opinions. This is the right way it should be. That's the wrong way. Of course, there is the right and left side of the road. Um, but when you drive uh, south on Alhambra Boulevard, the right's one way. And then when you drive north, the right's the other way, right? That's interdependence. So depending on your perspective, but it's interesting if we just say drive on the right hand side of the road, then we can have people going different directions on the same road, right? Is that so? So uh, most philosophical and religious traditions are like one-way streets. Isn't that so? The only way we know not to bump into each other uh, is, you know, we all got to go the same direction. But um, uh, Dharma has uh, the two truths. So that means we can uh, uh, make a arbitrary line down the center and then say, you know, we create this world of sides and then one person can go north and the person can go south. So, um, you know, that uh, is um, primordial awareness. Primordial awareness isn't 
uh, just saying there's no uh, north and no south, or you only have to drive one way. Um, primordial awareness is uh, uh, you can have uh, the understanding that uh, we just draw a line down the middle and then we can drive both ways, right? <clears throat> So when we talk about primordial awareness in that way, we can just say interdependence. When we talk about like, it's just a line then we can say, uh, you know, emptiness or don't know mind. And when we say just awareness alone, we mean it, it's already happening. There's some idea that uh, you can also discover uh, awareness uh, without the screwed upness and, you know, kind of go back in time or something before screwed up duality happened. And then you'll notice how, but uh, when we're looking at things from the ultimate point of view, you could say, which combines absolute and relative then, um, the screwed upness uh, is not a problem. <laughs> so the awareness and the marikpa, the rikpa, marikpa, there is the same time. So, and sometimes Mahamud we call that call merchant, right? So, um, the confusion and the clarity arise simultaneously. That's important, isn't it? So when we're thinking primordial awareness, don't always think that that's before things are screwed up. If we just get the screwed up out of the way, then we won't have a problem. That usually translates into on a functional level. If we just get rid of that person or those people, you know, we won't have a problem. You just go away and the problem will go away. That's some sort of thinking. So, Real primordial awareness is um, the uh, screwed upness. <laughs> uh, the confusion uh, doesn't have to become a problem. Okay. Because that clarity and confusion are going to rise simultaneously. So that's uh, one of the things that uh, my teacher really pushed forward a lot which was um, <laughs> highly annoying. He would just say, everything's the truth. And I go, no, no, that can't be right. No, that's the truth of everything's the truth. And from that perspective, you see, we, we, it means that um, we're not uh, becoming confused about our confusion. It's just true confusion, right? Is it a problem? If somebody is driving, and then you're standing in the sidewalk there in Alhambra Boulevard like a few months in a while, and they pull over and they go, which way to the nearest dispensary? Then, <laughs> which they do. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you just turn right on 8th Street. and it's just, um, So that doesn't have to be confusing, right? Just simple. And they're going to say, well, you just screwed up my day. That's confusing. Don't you, you know? It's like, no. So um, we're not in primordial awareness. Um, we're not confused about confusion, right? It's very clear. Confusion is clear. <clears throat> uh, and, and of course, uh, for some of you know, for um, the four dharmas of Gampopa talking about, you know, confusion dawning is wisdom, right? So in our tradition, at the highest level, we don't deal with dualities like we're just going to get rid of that, right? That person, that problem, we're just going to get rid of it or stomp it out or kill it or something. We just clarify it. Oh, that's, well, that's, you just turn right on 8th Street and there you are, or something. <clears throat> so when moving forward and bringing so many people together to do our Kala Chakra, we manifest uh, mandala, which is one way of talking about how um, 
this uh, primordial convergent awareness uh, manifest, right, as the mandala. So um, this mandala um, expresses itself uh, as a mandala, like mandala palace, like this, right? Kala chakra, isn't it? It's kind of cool, like that, right? <clears throat> uh, five levels. <laughs> So let, let, let me stop here and uh, see if um, I'm talking about the view, see if um, there's some questions to clarify the view. In other words, wonderful confusions, clear confusions. Morris has a human hand in person, so. <laughs> Lama, confusion is not a problem because it is transparent in the view of uh, wisdom? Uh, things are just transparent, right? You know, just, well, that's... I just see it as, oh, this is just wisdom. I mean, this is just, this is just confusion. Yeah. Confu this and I shouldn't confusion. react to it extraordinarily. We want to clarify it, but we don't have to react to it. Reacting would be kind of like <laughs> just, you know, closing your eyes and pushing. I'll just clar clarify it. Okay, thank you. Um, what's the difference between confusion and delusion? So that's a good question. Uh, delusion is uh, a special form of uh, confusion uh, that um, has uh, uh, extra defenses in it, right? So uh, regular confusion uh, is uh, someone asking for directions and um, delusion is, you know, uh, usually men who say, I, d I don't have to ask for directions. I'm just going to get lost. <laughs> delusion. So, <laughs> so in delusion, that's not, um, we don't see the curiosity. So delusions are designed to be impenetrable, right? So they're kind of flip side of, um, of awakening, you know, because they're designed to be impenetrable to like um, new experiences or, or arguments. So uh, these days we have many delusions that um, are, uh, have come to the surface, right? That's a good question. Someone from uh, remotely, like a little hand come up, maybe someone has. Let's alternate so it isn't all in the in the room. Someone must have a hand up out in video land, right? No. See, I can't see in my. I can't see. I can't see in my little thing here. So there are no hands. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds like you were trying to clarify it. That's confusion, right? I, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I can't see any hands. Maybe there are hands. Can you guys see hands? And we help. You know, so that's uh, not delusion. But then Connor has a hand or a fake hand. Yes, so a real hand. And, Okay, so we'll do Andrew and then Connor, I guess. Okay, just quickly to follow up on Dana's question. Um, would we say that delusion is more certainty and confusion is curiosity? Well, confusion, you know, has embedded within it, yeah, curiosity. You know, delusion is trying to bring uh, a false kind of certainty. But... Um, even delusions are not like solid, you know, so we have to be careful, you know, if we go that person or, or I'm totally delusioned or deluded, you know, then we make that into a solid out there, you know, so uh, no one can be completely, absolutely deluded, right? We like to think they're completely deluded or we're completely deluded, but it's impossible. Seems like a goal would be to move from delusion to confusion, Maybe. to clarity. 
yeah, sometimes people just immediately drop the delusion, you know, this like the skipping that step, so to speak, but usually this kind of a step process, a long run process where we're completely, you know, we're almost completely deluded and then we get curious, we're still confused, but then we clarify the confusion. But sometimes you can just totally drop the rock like that very quickly. So I think maybe that, you know, when people account for like, um, what they might call like sudden enlightenment kinds of things where just quickly a delusion is dropped, you know? So it's very dramatic. Uh, however, I, I tend to be a little bit skeptical about dramatic drops. So I, I like seeing the gradual clarification confusion also. It feels like that there's a positive spin on confusion in the sense that, that you're you're moving in the right direction, so to speak, um, with the confusion. I, I wouldn't say necessarily positive or negative. It's, confusion can last forever, too. You know, it'll just keep going on. So, uh, in in our tradition, our um, tradition, like unless there's some active intervention, delusion and confusion won't um, be worked with. That's kind of the good news, bad news, right? There's no outside going to come in and doesn't help. There's no spring at the bottom without the active investigation, active motivation, nothing will happen. Luckily, we, we do talk about Buddha nature, so I like to think that there's some chipping away there too, right? Cool. Um, so um, uh, in, with regards to co-emergence, uh, Jadar Mishra in one of his teachings this week had actually described co-emergence as um, sort of packing the, a mule, right? The two sides of the packs of a mule, a mule, right? Emptiness and sort of our perception of reality. But sort of questioning, well, how do you hold both at the same time, especially if you're working with conflict or working with something that's ongoing and you're not just sort of meditating or you're not, you know, how do you continue to hold both at the same time? It just seemed, I find that very difficult. So I was wondering if you could say a few words on that. Well, we need to be a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of my Zen teachers, Ikan Roshi, his newsletter, Maui Zen group was called Blind Donkey. Because uh, a uh, uh, famous lineage teacher in Zen uh, on his deathbed asked his attendant, what, what's your realization? And um, the person gave a very profound answer. And the teacher said, just to think my transmission will be carried on by this blind donkey. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of a compliment, you know. Uh, the Prajna Paramita is like kind of opposite joke, you know. So, like that. so uh, we, we, you want to be the donkey or the yak that's in the middle of carrying like that, the middle way. So this, like these Sufi stories of Nasruddin, anybody read those back in your hippie days? Nasruddin is like, maybe like Rumi, but so um, a man comes to Nasruddin and says, um, I'm, I'm having problems in my marriage and um, it's, it's my wife's fault. And that's where Dean goes, you're right. And then he goes back, says the wife, the wife gets obviously upset, and goes to Nasr Dean and says, problems in the marriage are my husband's fault. And Nasr Dean says, you're right. <laughs> and <laughs> so they both show up and 
from the National Dean that says, you told us that we're both right. How can we both be right? And what did Nasser Dean say? You're right. <laughs> it's well to meditate on that. <laughs> that Nasser Dean couples, couple counseling therapy. <laughs> You're both right. <clears throat> I can't, can't be both right? Or are you both right? Which one? <clears throat> yeah. So um, here we practice the Maha Madhyamaka, the we want to be Maha Madhyamakans, a great, great middle way, whether we call it Mahamudra Zogchen or Maha Madhyamaka, the great middle way, right? See nothing but the truth. <clears throat> so that's the view. <clears throat> Any, any questions from out there in, in the land, virtual land? We're, we're dream beings too, by the way. Okay, so. So the meditation. Um, Lana, uh, yes. Dirk does have a hand up, so. No, and then he says he doesn't. Well, <laughs> just scratching, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so the meditation is how we integrate the view. Isn't that so? So um, for our purposes, um, I would like everybody to be thinking about um, what their function is and what they would like to contribute in the mandala. Kalachakra mandala we're making. And then um, what would be the best email for people to send that to me? Like Mama Jimpa at LRDC maybe? Like, I think. Um, we need an uh, answer with that. Yes. Turn on the mics here. Yes. Um, I, I, I don't I, think it's on. Yeah. What is it? There it goes. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, yeah. the LRDC because uh, lots of people have it already. That's what I think. My, um, Lama Jimpa dot, uh, dot LRDC at gmail.com. I'll say it again since I hesitated. Lama Jimpa dot LRDC at gmail.com. Could you put it in the chat too, please? Uh, to extend the metaphor, I'm, I'm interested in what, see how many people want to drive south on Alhambra Boulevard, how many people want to drive north, and how many people just want to ask directions. <laughs> right? Or just sit in the car and ride. Maybe just sit in the car and ride. Yeah, I'm just, that would be very nice. Like, I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> so uh, one time, I'm into stories today, so <clears throat> um, I was studying at Naropa Buddhist Studies and also uh, studying Zen at the same time. So I uh, invited Sasaki Roshi up to Boulder and we went to Vajradhatu to meet and met with one of Trungpa uh, Ramshay's ministers, so to speak. <laughs> Lord High Chamberlain or somebody. <laughs> so some of the Tramarshis here to do this and establish the Balas for the Dharma. Went on for quite a while, right? <clears throat> Which is traditional. So like very and then the teacher said, Well, uh, you know, Roshi, what 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 are you here for? Um, and he just said, I have nothing to teach. I'm just here to make people laugh. You know? So we need, we need both, right? We need both, like, I'm just here to ride and uh, have a good ride. And uh, I'm here to, or I'm here to drive, or just here to laugh, or I'm here to wash dishes, right? So if people would uh, send what, what they would like to do, then I can uh, 
and say, well, on this side of the road, we need four lanes. And on this side of the road, we only need two lanes, right? Because the, the line can uh, move like that. And that would be very helpful. So instead of me just assigning things or creating, you know, first I want to see what people believe that they can, what they would like to do. Do you want to drive? North or south, east or west? Do you want to be a passenger? Do you want to ask for directions? Do you want to be a driver or like something like that? Does that make sense? So and we have a question from okay. Hi, Lama. Um oh um okay, so do you have to pick one thing? I mean, can't you want to do different things? Yeah, you could do different things. You could say, I want to do different things, right? Yeah. So I brought this. Um, I don't, can TV Land see this? Hello, uh, Tucker? Sort of, yes. So um, it's really interesting to think kind of architecturally or to think of yourself as uh, like a building. <laughs> but uh, you can also say, well, I want to do this or do this, but you can also, and Tantra, we, we can use substantial language without getting confused, right? So we could say, I, I want to be uh, this beam or I want to be this, you know, uh, I want to be the roof or I want to be the foundation. So you can think like that also. See, because usually we're just thinking from the standpoint of, I want to do this and I don't want anybody to get in my way. And the rest of them yeah. don't know anything. So yeah. if they just leave me alone and let me do it, then that's called normal. Um, so, uh, you know, when we're thinking roads, we're thinking kind of functioning and, and um, uh, in our uh, channels like that. So um, for those people that might be around this afternoon, around two-ish, you know, we'll be doing some salon. So that's one kind of metaphor for how to actualize the view is to like these passageways, right? So we have central, middle, and then the two side channels, right? We want to bring the winds into the central channel. So those are roadways, right? We have to think of contemporary things, you know, so roadways. But um, one way, uh, particularly in Vajrayana, is we think kind of structurally. So uh, you could say, I, I want to be a roof, or I want to be a beam, or I want to be the foundation, or I want to be a room, you know, like that, and what that means to you, right? So you can think spatially too. Like, I'd like to be the floor. I like, and what does that mean to be the floor? I'd like to be the walls. What does that mean to be the walls? There are a lot of wall people, you know, and we need walls. Walls means boundaries, right? Or I want to be a door. So I want people to be able to transition between different states, right? Go from one room to the next. So door people are very good to be greeters. You know, they stand at the door. I want to be a door. So I'm going to stand and let people in. Or I want to be a wall. So I want to make sure everybody respect the boundaries, right? Now, you know, some of, you know, some people are very boundary people. Do you know a few? Or maybe we are. Right? Like, please just don't open the door and barge into the room. Knock, wait for a response, and then we'll let you know, right? Or don't drift over into my lane, right? You know, boundary people are the ones that, that put the little thumpy things on the freeway. So if you drift door, some people are, you know, and then some people are kind of roof people. <laughs> they just kind of like, I just want to be you know, shielding people from the rain and the sun. I want to look up, you know, like I want to be in the sky. However, 
let's say back east, like in Vermont or Maine, you don't, if you're walking in the cow pasture, you don't want to look up that often, right? <laughs> so, and some people are ground people, like ground people are going to say, watch your step. Or make sure the ground isn't going to be earthquakey or watch your step. So we use these kind of metaphors for people to help organize around the view, right? What their function and what their being is, right? So in Vajrayana, we can talk in substantial language. It doesn't always have to be emptiness language or functional language. It can be substantial language like that, right? That should be easy, don't you think? So, and then, uh, also in Vajran and view, we can talk about being uh, Buddha, Deva. So we're not the you know, Mandala Palace, or so not the roadways, we're not the winds, channels, and drops, we're this radiant um, deity, right? Some people really like that, you know, they really like, you know, like everything works when I just imagine myself with four arms. You ever find yourself like, I wish I had more arms? Well, with Kala Chakra, you can have 24, and then you can get everything done. So many people are very time-oriented. Um, they're not organizing around function. They're not organizing around placement, which is very, you know, building-oriented. Um, they're organized around time. Do you know anybody that's organized around time? I'm organized around time, very much so. No way health, time, 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 time. So uh, that's very helpful to me. So I like having 24 arms. So time, uh, I like momentariness. I like impermanence in time. That's my friend. So I'm, when I'm thinking about the view uh, as expressed in activity, View meditation action, you know, that I'm thinking time. For me, it's very helpful and also kind of scary because there's uh, the chair you can return to, right? So I'm going back to pretty much the same chair, or I'm just going to drive down the same road again, do the same function, I'm going to wash the dishes again. But there's no time stretch machine. There's no going backwards. Is there? That would be delusion, right? So uh, I'm very time oriented. That's how you know I really like organizing my internal system. So I do organize internal systems somewhat around buildings, somewhat around um, function, somewhat around DD yoga, but I like organizing around time. So uh, my contribution will be like thinking about the um, the schedule. Maybe there's some other time people that um, maybe you say, oh, I'm really good with time too. I can uh, get people to do things on time and move things along. That's really difficult, right? Sometimes <clears throat> to, to get things basically moving on, on the right time and the right place. For me, that's uh, Kalapa, the right time, the right place. <clears throat> so do we have some questions from um, virtual Zoomy land or comments? Hi, Lama, my name is Melanie. Hi. What? Hi, I, I was just commenting on the um, structural point of view that you had um sometimes it changes for me like sometimes I'll wake up one week and do not want to be the floor because I just don't want to be everybody's foundation or everybody's rock and I just too much responsibility I just cannot do the floor this week or sometimes I'll feel like um the walls like I really like the way you put that because it resonated with me and it opened views to different situations in my life on how I could what part of the building I would be or how I would feel 
And um, so that really resonated with me really well. Um, Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then time, I'm definitely not a time person and I try really hard to be. <laughs> I try really hard to be and I'm not sure. I, I've always tried really hard to be and something about time just doesn't work out for me, so. Are you there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought it lost you. <laughs> One way, you know, like, uh, of course we have rising as a deity, rising as a mansion, uh, the movement of that inner wind's channels, the functions, right? <clears throat> um, and then time. And then uh, this sense of space. <clears throat> so uh, space is uh, the most difficult um, in some sense because uh, even though we're um, dealing with space all the time, like what is it, right? So in Sanskrit, that space is absence of obstruction absence of obstruction so you can you're not hating anything right like that <clears throat> so uh the interesting thing about sanskrit uh maybe dirk can uh, say some interesting things about sanskrit too uh is it it has the ability to take a positive and add a prefix to it to make it negative so um, when the people that are doing the Buddha Dharma study program know that uh, sometimes we um, uh, have to say positive things uh, uh, for those people that are reading Dharma Kirti, you might get an example like, that's a pot. Um, so that's an affirmative. Um, like we can have uh, an affirming negative, like that's not a pot, that's a rose. <clears throat> but we uh, can have a non-affirming negative. We could say um, it's not a pot. <clears throat> We're not saying what it is, <laughs> but it's not a pot. <clears throat> so. Um, this is very difficult because we always tend to go to generally an affirmation or then some kind of uh, a substantial negative or something, right? You know, it's got to be something, right? Instead, it's very difficult just to say uh, not. Um, like, uh, when I was intensely studying Dzogchen, you know, I'd say, oh, please, uh, teacher, give me some pith instructions, right? And then the teacher would say, there's no problem. Is that helpful? Or even worse, like it's all the truth. We go, that's not how, that's not how. <laughs> I got this report due next week, and then I got to pay some bills. Like, how is that helpful? You know, like that. So uh, it's it's very high teaching, right? To actually, you know, uh, so like the wouldn't that be irritating? Like, uh, I will do that to some people here because as we go forward and uh, manifesting the mandala, da 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 da, da I don't go. No, that's not really a problem. Will that be okay if I say that? <laughs> are you saying are you saying yes, Autumn? That'll be okay. All right. <laughs> that's not a problem. <clears throat> so uh, when we however, when we say uh, a non-affirming negative uh, for those uh, uh, folks sometimes get stuck on that, you know? So that's 
sometimes uh, criticism, uh, as Dirk knows, that uh, Mipar Mimshe would make of more traditional Gelug, right? So you get stuck on a non-affirming negative, right? We don't want to get stuck on that, right? So when we say you can't find the mind, you say you can't find the mind as an object. We're not saying there's no mind, right? Even in Zen, they sometimes say no mind. That doesn't mean you're a stone, right? It's just you can't, like an object is like space. You, it's not like, space is not an object. Sorry, space is not an object. You can say space is over here, but not over here. There's no object. But we can't say that space doesn't exist, right? So that's one way of organizing the view. So can someone go back and say what what ways of organizing the view and meditation so we can have the correct action? How many did I do, Patty? Well, you're writing. I am writing, but I always uh, write because of this weak area. Could you repeat your question, please? No, you know what it is. So just what are the different ways that we can Organize. The different ways we can organize the view. Yeah. Oh so, gosh, I. Yeah, the meditate on the view. So we're talking about function, like winds, tunnels, and drops. So we talk about the road. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Um, uh -huh. then, then what's next? We talk uh, about the line of this emptiness. Like, is that what you're referring? Well, to? that's a. There's wind channels and drops saw along today. And then, then we're talking about uh, organizing around like you know, a building or our body, actually, you know, body and building or something like that. Then what was the third one? Organizing around like as a DD, you know, like this radiant. Oh, okay. um, organizing as what? Time. What time is your time? And I should be. What kind of neighborhood? And then the space. So when uh, the 16th Karmapa was a very interesting person and um, who uh, manifested uh, his. Um, in, in Chicago. <laughs> so, uh, but people would ask him questions up until the end. And um, on a Trump she a student asked the Karmapa, uh, what happens when you die? I've said this a number of times. So, what did uh, the Karmapa say? Nothing. And maybe. And people spend tons of time doing bardo retreats. They go, I spend tons of time memorizing every single, <laughs> every single deity in the uh, bardo. And now you're telling me nothing happens. Would, would you believe, be relieved, or would you be like pissed off? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like that. That's very hard to hear. Nothing happens. Let me think. Okay, so uh, now it's about twelve or three. So um, I want people to send me that <clears throat> from those different perspectives. Or all? How many? How many did I go over? Yeah. So. <clears throat> There's more of it, you know. Yeah, so don't worry about it now. So someone else wrote it down. So the uh okay, good. Well, I was gonna ask you something else, but since you brought yeah, it up. Yeah. Since you brought up the Karmapa, uh, uh, what happens when you're alive? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I 
like, oh, we all think, you know, like, <laughs> it's happening. And we're like, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Also, I, I would say when you're talking about space, uh, e even modern scientific empirical thinking is that there is nothing that exists that's empty space. I mean, even uh, the, 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 they, 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 they can't find empty space. Yeah. So, so that's, that's something we can't find either, I guess. <laughs> and then the third one was your, was the Maha Madhyamika because, uh, I I've learned that Madhya is also a term for the waste. Ah. And so I have a conflict uh, between Maha Madhyamika and wishing to do more of a Hini Madhyamika. <laughs> Because I would like my waist to be smaller rather than yeah, larger. Yeah, right, smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So I'm glad you're doing the Sanskrit. That's that's wonderful because Sanskrit has the, uh, you can make jokes in Sanskrit. That's when you know you're really good at a language, right? You can joke in it. So learning to joke in Portuguese is something maybe Robert is working on. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing uh, a college talk of Jainang. So um, we should advertise college talk of Jainang uh, as an introductory initiation, right? Um, so I'm going to get some more clarity, hopefully, because now I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> so I have to ask, will uh, Ramshe, like, will you be giving, like, or additional commentary on the succession guru yoga, or do you want me making it more general? So I'll find that out. You know, I'm not entirely sure, um, but chances are uh, uh, the main uh, textual focus of college talk will still be um, the uh, you know succession guru yoga with college chakra combined. You know, um, because we know it really well. Uh, we've been doing it a really long time and it's a relatively uh, doable, don't you think? So, um, Ellen and Kara and, and Doug uh, have been doing regularly. Who else has been doing Kalachaka regularly? Yeah, well, I know, yeah, Marie and Video Land. And, uh, yeah, good. Um, but I'm going to ask Rimshe about like, well, you know, uh, you know, expanding what, what other color chakra practices would be kind of contained under that, under the Jnana. These are kind of technical questions, uh, but um, it's good to get some of these questions is a little bit from my side answered, but probably we won't go into a lot of detail and the advertising, because uh, uh, we, you know, it's just going to be like, you know, show up. And everyone here comes that's here with a few other people and the uh, monastics and the entourage. Guess what? The whole, this will be full. So everybody will be <laughs> video and maybe we'll have some people back in the dojo too, right? We'll work that out. But, um, by and large, my views are gonna uh, depend on uh, Jada Rinpoche to kind of create the mandala when he comes. Like, this is what I want you guys to do with it. So it's not totally predetermined ahead of time. But my assumption is we will continue to expand doing succession guru yoga and expand um, in the Kala Chakra practice, right? And, uh, you know, Ellen and, and Marie have worked hard to make connections with different color chakra groups around the world. So I, I want to continue that. That's a good idea, don't you think? As far as I know, we're the only temple that has our color chakra um, mandala on the, on the outside. <laughs> so we contacted Nanyal, got special permission to get a photo and then put it, blow it up. So it's kind of unique, don't you think? So 
a request not just to do the practice, but um, I'd like people to do some reading on Kala Chakra and I can send out you know, some suggested short texts or books so um, that we have uh, time as to do, you know, question time. So we have some good questions, right? Which we always do Monday. And then Friday night, I guess we'll have a Thursday is something, right? What's Thursday? Right. So um, I don't know. Well, the numbers on that might be restricted, but I've asked Johnny Rimshay to um, have less of the small retreat house, the ADU that um, she's building in her backyard at considerable expense. <laughs> so I want people to do individual uh, retreat and use that, right? So, <clears throat> uh, you know, just like a little, a little um, Airbnb or something like that. That'll be nice, right? <clears throat> and then uh, ordination ceremony. So as far as I know from Geshla, it's going to be fairly unique because it won't just be restricted to monastics. It's, we're just going to open it up. So, and then there'll be a, stu a blessing of the statue. And then maybe even at the same time, uh, I wanted uh, Ramesha to know that we have children around. So um, uh, Jack and Ben will introduce. That would should be interesting, don't you think? <laughs> so, I'm hoping something very spontaneous happens. So with Jack and Ben, people know Jack and, and Ben. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> There'll be a talk Friday night. Then what are we doing Saturday? Yeah, Kalachaka Saturday, uh, 11. And then Sunday, uh, Ramshe will be at um, Zana Bazaar. So I'm doing, uh, I agree with Paul de Lamo. I agree with the highest yoga tantra. I agree with the highest wings and uh, green horse head <laughs> from yeah. And Paul de Lamo's uh, protector practice. That's all probably going to be in Mongolian. So if you want to go, just beware. I don't think it's going to be translated in English. I don't think so. But that'll be fine. But also, there's just going to be a lot of people there. So I can get some more information on that. But you know, obviously, we're invited. Questions? OK. Abhidharma. Would you recommend that Paula Chakra initiation book by His Holiness? That's a review. Danny? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Which book? The Kala Chakra Initiation book. Yeah, that's, uh, you can read that. Yeah, of course. That's going to give go through a lot of much more detail than the one we're doing. That will give you an overview. It's the one I have. Um, okay, go for okay. it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Abhidharma. Uh, can you, okay. Uh, my question is whether I'll be here or not. I need to know. I'm involved in events a couple times a month. And the COVID protocols are really important to me. And I've reconsidered the event that I'm currently involved in because the COVID protocols are so poor. So what are going to be the COVID protocols for this event? Ah! That's, oh no. Uh, well, I do know, but I don't know. 
I mean, what are that's we not a good answer. Yeah, I know. That's a, that's that's one of those I don't know answers because very practically. So let's say right now we say, okay, uh, uh, you know, vaccinated and masked, right? But there there'll be a lot of monastics showing up. I don't know exactly whatever you know. I, I don't know what Ramesh's entourage and other monastics. I don't know what their protocols are. So we still have to work out what practically will be the protocols. But there's rules. We can say does this this right. We need this and this and this. And then you know for like on Saturday, I don't know, like for meeting from 11, I don't know how late it'll go, right? Maybe till four o'clock, I, I don't know, right? In that space, yeah, they, how much control we'll have over the environment, or what the expectation is, it will be fluxy, right? Okay, so when then I choose not to come then at all. Well, so like in a lot of things, so let's say, we're double vaccinated, even getting the booster. I don't know. I guess I could go down the Safeway and get it, but I'm being a good person waiting for my Kaiser doc, but I'll probably get the booster here this November. So if I'm boosted and masked, then that's one kind of form of safety, right? But uh, just in the real world, and maybe people in the room here that, okay, they're not wear a mask and it might be very, you know, you're in the middle of an impairment and an attendant of Rimshays or somebody's not going to be masked and that's it. So there's always that factor. So I just want to be clear that we try as much as we can to create a safe environment, but still there's probability, not certainty. Hey, Lama, it's Greg. Because we can say rules, but then they're not. That's also going to be some some changes, right? Like, or maybe this month, Sacramento County might say, "Well, people can gather. We've reached a certain level. We don't have to be masked." So then that requirement might come down, but then people might decide to stay masked, right? Um, I don't think. I don't think right now there's been talk of. Um, looking at people's COVID card. But when Sabine and I were up in the Northwest, Washington State, they, you're carded before you go in um, a restaurant now, right? Of course, you could probably fake the card. <laughs> you know, it's like, it is always something, right? You know, and then, and then, okay. And then you're sitting in a restaurant some other, you know, and then you've got this many people in the restaurant, no one's wearing a mask, right? So is that safe or not? Just because you're eating? I don't know, right? It's kind of interesting, right? So. They do that in San Francisco. Yeah. And Please use the microphone. The that I've involved in, yeah. I, have, I was required to be vaccinated yeah. and show my car. Yeah. So, uh, the, there could be, I don't know from coming from, uh, Jabba Ripshay side, uh, what his requirements are. So I, that's a discussion that I may not be able to have with him personally, but hopefully can with his attendants and with, um, you know, like that. So he may have a different, the line down the road may be a little different. From traditionally point of view, like okay, so John Rimshe comes. So uh, when when the teacher's giving an empowerment, they kind of run the room, right? Just to be traditional, right? They're running the room. So he, he could say, you know, it's a, if you want to wear your mask, you might just say that. Sometimes teachers could say, if you want to wear a mask, fine. If you don't, fine. You know, right? Many things like that can happen. So we could say ahead of time, like we're trying to follow Sacramento County regulations and stay very like us, but uh, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna have the Dharma police running around, you know. We can't, it won't work. 
just to be totally honest, right? Thanks, Lama. I had a couple questions. Um, do you know for the event how you're going to limit or not limit the number of people that come? Because you know, you mentioned that that we've been getting pretty connected with people, and there's quite a bit of interest in this because Jada Rinpoche hasn't been on tour here for a few years. Yeah. Um, so, do you have a sense of whether we should discourage people, or whether there'll be some registration, or or how that's going to go? Well, we need to have a registration and soon um, to determine what number of people we want to have in the Gopi here and maybe back in the dojo, which will be kind of remote in a weird way, right? But, you know, sometimes another impairment that have been out with small thing, then everybody walks with the, some of the ritual instruments and they walk back to the room and then come back, you know, and, or they walk in and then leave, you know, there are all kinds of possibilities like that but it's gonna be very, very compact here. So the majority of the people are, are, even if they're in Sacramento, are gonna be online. Well, that, that was another question yeah. I had. You intend to um, Zoom the empowerment? Yeah, because again- I, Well, that's another question. So I, I, don't, think, I don't think we've, uh, for the empowerment, we've had an answer from Jeff Wimshi yet, I don't think so. Oh, but you're open to it if he's yes, okay yeah, with it. Yeah, definitely, I'm gonna advocate for like, yeah, definitely. Zoom in the empowerment. Yeah, the that'd be great. And then I I did tell Karen I would be a proxy for her if we got into details. So depending on what you find or decide about the numbers at her place, yeah. she may be able to benefit from more or less support from Sangha yeah. members doing things. I know she mentioned that Dirk's offered to you know, help with food and such, but yeah. if others are willing to help her in preparation for that yeah. event and potentially during, if you have a lot of people, then she'll she could benefit from that support she couldn't be here today but the uh the interdependent side of things is like this so uh uh basically you know like i'm working with uh jada Rimshi and gishla so sometimes they say well it has to be like this or we need to do, like do it this way and then i'll say well can we do it this way so you're kind of doing that um but, uh, you know, definitely for empowerment, like ordination ceremony, things like that, like Tata Rinche's will have the final say. Like, if you say, well, we're just gonna roll it this way, then you're, you've got to run it that way. I mean, he's very sophisticated, you know, and, and Sarah J has got, you know, when you go on the Facebook, they're still wearing the mask all the time. So whatever he decides to do, Yeah. Not. So, have I created more clarity or more confusion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that. So, uh, Generally, you know, we, we really actually know what we're doing here. We've done a lot of impairments here. Jada Rimshi has been here a lot. We know him personally. You know, we know everybody. So it, it's really, uh, there are not a lot of hidden corners actually. But because of COVID and uh, because of the compressed time frame, you know, that that's always creates, you know, a different kind of structure. There's not a lot. There's not a lot of time. There's not a lot of wiggle room, and also the space is small, right? So if we said we're, you know, you know, renting, um, what's the place called downtown? The arena. The golden one. Yeah, or the convention center. Or golden. Or golden. Yeah, like that would be different. Of course, that would be different kind of problems. And we'd have to pay security. We'd have to pay an insurance deposit. And we couldn't even afford it in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, crazy. Yeah, so uh, then we could just have people spaced out. But we, we do have uh, limitations like that. The auditorium is smaller. Which old one? 
Pacific Auditorium. Is that close? That's a Memorial Auditorium. Memorial. Yeah, so I've never done an event there, but I'm, I've done events because uh, we're not doing event that way. We're doing mandala. <laughs> mandala. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, they'll there. So th there's always something that will go wrong, right? Because it's co-emergent awareness. There'll always be something, uh, like maybe really, really wrong, wrong. Just something will go wrong, which we may not even notice. But there, there will be definitely some spontaneous things like that. So um, uh, when we're doing any impairment or initiation, we're calling it in on introductory initiation. There's always something that in initiations you give up your renunciation. In America, we always think about gaining, but actually, you know, we, we have to give something up. We have to give up some time. We will have to give up, you know, some comfort and we'll be giving up some safety. Most of all, we'll be giving up, which is hardest, is our opinions. <laughs> That's hard, right? So that there will be some giving up to create the space to create the mandala. But I, I think it will be reasonably safe and we'll have fun. Alana. My goal is to just stay kind of healthy and try to um, uh, coordinate a little bit. I don't think I'll be. I don't think I'll be going down to greet Ramshay at the airport. In November even. Uh, I don't think I can take any bit any more time off from work. Uh, uh, personal issue, interesting. So Sabine and I were up in the northwest, and um, we're in escrow to purchase uh, land. Port Townsend. So due to the blessings of the uh, Dakinis, we found out like a 14 acre uh, land that uh, overlooks the ocean and the uh, Olympic mountains with room for uh, guest house and main house and garden and so forth. Really incredible. Yay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're, uh, the same kind of uh, issues exist like in building that some people here build houses or are building houses now no like we're kind of okay <laughs> like, who's a good contractor and, but we're not there yet so that will be over a gradual period of time several years and then i'll be coming down here regularly um, Staying for a week, you know, the time and doing things, right? But probably as I get older, I'll get more senile too. So I, I don't, you, know, you don't want too many more teachings from me. I might say something wrong. You know. <laughs> like that. So. <laughs> so some of the sometimes teachers get really old, and just like old folks. They start saying kind of interesting things, right? So you know that's always an issue for like students. Going, well, is that is that kind of? <laughs> so there was this really um, incredible teacher, uh, Kusum Lingpa, who uh, uh, came to Sacramento. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, uh, you know, I, I knew Chad Goodramshi real well, and he asked me to sponsor. Um, sometimes we said his own this Kusum Limpa, and Kusum Limpa was very spontaneous. And what, you know, even his close students would go, is that, is that him? Or is that crazy wisdom? Or is this, is he, is he what's going on? He would meet people and he would just say stuff like, um, give me all your money. <laughs> it's an effective technique. I think it worked. Anyway, 
So any last comments or questions before we close? Mm -hmm. Are there any announcements? Yes. Like what? Is this is this on? Oh, okay. Um. Well, I I just uh, I just thought maybe this is a good time to say that um that in advance of uh, Jado and Pache and all of his entourage coming, there's a few of them. If, if, if to let people know that it would help us plan if if we had the resources more now for donations to sponsor um, him his visit because uh, it's a lot for him to travel so far all across the ocean to come here. So I just wanted to mention that. And also, um, uh, I, I guess mantra rolling is, is, is a, or do we need more mantra rolling, Connor? I, I'm not sure. There might be a little bit left in that area too. Uh, yeah, as for the, as for the mantra rolling, um, there are uh, maybe two to three dozen mantras that are rolled that still need yellow fabric. So. Those who are here uh, would like to participate in finishing up that project. That would be great. Um, and that would actually finish the, the rolling part of the project. Uh, and then Geshe will be here on the 13th to actually put the mantras into the Buddha statue. Paul Nolan, I think he's online. Uh, he might have left at this point, but he might still be online. Has uh, generously volunteered to actually make the uh, uh, very detailed uh, wood pieces that will actually hold the mantras in place in the Buddha statue. Um, and then Geshe will put them in, the wood will be glued in place. Um, and then uh, we'll just uh, wait with the statue until Jada Rinpoche comes to consecrate it. So it's been a long project. Thank you so much for everyone who's participated. Um, I hope you've uh, gained something from doing it. I definitely have, it's not nearly as easy as it seems. So. Thank you. Yeah, good. It's a tradition in India and Tibet to, you know, acknowledge uh, patrons and sponsors unless they want to be anonymous. So if you want to make some kind of uh, monetary contribution and you want to be anonymous, please tell myself or Judy Taylor. We don't have a bookkeeper right now. So Judy has taken that back. So, which is really nice of her. Um, but I think it's important people know, like sometimes, so I don't want to be outing, but they didn't say they had to be confidential. So um, Michael Cowell, who's hopefully coming up from Mexico, uh, sent us $5,000. And Deb Dietz sent 2,000. Mm -hmm. Incredible, right? And many people here have donated thousands and thousands. So, um, uh, even though we have been restricted, uh, you know, and we have a board meeting tomorrow night, I think. No, I mean, on Monday night, uh, right? That's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. uh, see, see now, <laughs> Alzheimer's already. So uh, we will be looking at the budget, but people have been incredibly um, um, generous. But I do overall see the color chakra. Uh, teachings and Jada Roche's uh, visit as ways to start opening up and meeting new people and, and bringing new people into the mandala. What do you think? Yeah, it's so, time, you know, we can, we can expand. So let's do dedication. Due to the yeah, merits of these virtuous actions, actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chanrizik Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars. 
Sankarpa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Lo Sang Dragpa, and make requests at your holy feet. Yeah, good. No. <laughs> 